Hi everyone. So in this video today, we're going to be testing out the rapid charging capabilities of the Polestar 2. Most of you will probably charge at home if you can, but uh, for many of us, when we're going on longer journeys or if we don't have a home charger, might be looking at charging on a rapid charger. There are lots of these available uh, across the UK at different power ratings, which will give you different speeds. So today we're going to go and try out a 150 kilowatt charger, which is the fastest you can find for the Polestar 2. Let's go. Okay, so we've jumped into the car. Before we head off, let's just have a look at the range that we've got. Battery's currently 19% saying 40 mile range. So I'm gonna drive, it's about 13 miles, I think from here to the nearest 150 kilowatt charger. So that should uh, be more than enough to get there. Hopefully have about 15% battery, something like that when we arrive and uh, test out how quickly and the experience of using a fast charger at 150 kilowatts. Okay, so we're heading off to try out this 150 kilowatt charger. It's in the village of Ashington in West Sussex. The interesting things about these fast chargers, they are rated at different power outputs. So typically you find 50 kilowatt chargers in uh, quite a lot of locations. They're very common. 100, 150 kilowatt chargers are less common, but uh, we're starting to see a few more of those appear. Now the interesting thing, people do seem to compare the Polestar to the Tesla charging quite a lot. Tesla will charge faster in the amount of time given, but it appears that the Tesla charging network, while it's amazing, interestingly in West Sussex, which is where I live, there are no Tesla superchargers. So if you want to go and utilize the Tesla network, say for example, you haven't got a home charger and you live in our area, you can't, you'd have to go to um, uh, a normal rapid charger. <clears throat> so the interesting thing is we've actually got two 150 kilowatt chargers that are uh, one's on the polar network and another is uh, shell that are about 15 minutes drive from where i live so that's an interesting observation that's kind of unusual maybe different parts of the country vary in terms of what access they have to these particular chargers the best way of finding these chargers i i think personally is to use an app like ZapMap. Each network has its own app. So for example, you could go onto the Polar app and you could have a look at where their charges are, but ZapMap has pretty much got everything covered. When looking at prices of different charges, there seems to be a lot of variation in this. So the most expensive I've seen are the Ionity chargers. They are rated at up to 350 kilowatts. So it's an incredible network that they're setting up in the UK across Europe that will allow you to travel without having to worry too much about charging. Uh, it's contactless payment, very easy to use. And in the future, when cars are able to take advantage of it, they future-proof the whole network by setting it up at 350 kilowatts. But the, uh, the challenge is the cost. They are the most expensive. Uh, I think something like 69, 79 pence per kilowatt. That, that makes your per mile cost something like 20 to 25 pence, more than the cost of driving um, a fuel-based car. So those are the kinds of things that you would use only if you, you rarely need to. Uh, there are other options for charging that are much more affordable. So Polar is, is a good example. Their charging costs do vary quite a bit, but if you have a Polar Plus membership, which is a card that you pay a monthly subscription fee, many of their slower charges are free on that, but it also gets you a discount at the uh, rapid charging network. So the one I'm going to today, they charge just 20 pence per kilowatt. And uh, that is um, rarely affordable. That gives you a driving cost of something like seven pence per mile. So it's well worth thinking about where you go to charge, depending on how much of a rush you're in and also what you've got available to you within the area that you, that you need to stop off and, and go for a rapid charge. So I love the acceleration on this car. It's pretty impressive. This is a little stretch of road where you can actually accelerate quite easily from a, from a slow speed. So here we go, foot to the floor, let's go. Oh, it really does throw you back into the seat. That's something that I don't think I'm ever gonna get tired of. So 
we're just pulling up at the uh, charger that we're looking for. It's like a nice new setup. They've even got the signage set up here at this BP with EV charging. Signal is over there, so that's good. We got here with, uh, what have we got? 13% battery remaining and uh, 25 miles. So if it doesn't work, at least that's enough to get back home. And uh, yeah, let's reverse in and give this a try. So trip computer saying that was 36 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. The last stretch that I had to drive there was uh, 70 miles an hour. So it was about 70 mile an hour driving and I put my foot down a couple of times. So it's not too bad really for a cold morning and a short trip. So here we are parked outside this 150 kilowatt charger at the uh, BP in Ashington. Let's just have a look at how we uh, activate a charge here at the charging station. So we click start, see what it says. So we've got card payment, phone, RFID card. That's what I have with the Polar membership. I'll scan that over here on the reader. Verified, you are allowed to start charging. So back in the car now, and uh, while it's charging, let's have a look at what it says, giving us some data. So it says it's gonna complete that at 10.45, and uh, a charging speed of 158 miles per hour. So 393 volts, limit set to 80%. Yeah, that's correct. You can see here, it's, uh, it's echoes that on that screen, the 80% limit been charging for four minutes and our charging speed has gone up now to 197 miles per hour so this is exactly the kind of thing that I was gonna gonna show you basically the situation with uh, electric cars like this is that you don't instantaneously get 150 kilowatt hours you're not gonna get that surging into the battery all at once they have a system by which they will ramp up um, some will use it in a in a line others will be stepped and uh, you will get different charging rates at different times. So generally speaking, um, and I'm not an expert on this, but this is my experience and my understanding, is that uh, you're better off arriving at a rapid charge with a fairly low percentage, and then charging perhaps to even say 50 or 60%. The higher you get, definitely above 80%, it will slow, slow down massively. So the, the best thing to do is to figure out how much power you actually need to get you where you you need to go if you want to charge to 100 percent, you can but it takes a long time to finish that last 20 or 30 percent of charge as you're not getting the maximum that you would from that particular rapid charge at that time 230 miles per hour it's pretty good 232 there you can see it's rising rapidly now now that we hit 28 percent on the battery okay so it looks like we're getting 252 miles per hour um, starting to increase 254 and we're at a battery level of 38%. Okay, so we've reached a battery level of 52%. Charging speeds dropped down a little bit to 227 miles per hour. 63%, 195. So looks like it's stabilized at, um, at that particular rate of charge now. Okay, we're at just 71% uh, now. Still charging exactly the same rate, 193 miles per hour. So we've got 9% to go and we'll... Uh, let it stop at 80% before we head back home. Okay, so we're nearly at 80%, 78% now on the battery, 177 the charge speed. Okay, and in the last percent, you can see it's really slowing down now because it's targeting 80%, which is what we've got it set to. So as it approaches 80%, you can see the charging speed slows down quite significantly. It's taken about 45, there we go, 80%, 40, nearly 45 minutes for 54.9. So call it 55 kilowatt hours in 45 minutes. Okay, so on the screen here, you can see it says 80%, so let's hit the stop button just to make sure it's done. Keep your RFID card or tag in front of the reader. So let's pop the tag in front of the reader again. Verified, you are allowed to stop charging. Let's head over to the car to um, disconnect. There we go, so we got the cable out. That was a bit of a challenge. And uh, pop that back into the holder over here. There we go, we're done. That's back in, shut the door and let's head off.
after trying out a 150 kilowatt charger, BP Charge Master down in uh, Ashington, what do we learn from that? Well, I think the interesting thing is that we went from 12 to 80%, took about 45 minutes. So that's no big deal. It's perhaps not as quick as I might've expected it to be, but as I've already mentioned several times, you only get the maximum charging capability for a short period of time. So I think if you, uh, if you think about your charging stops as having to take around 40 minutes, gives you enough time to get out, use the bathroom, um, get some food, take a little break. I think it actually works out quite well. And the fact that it's a bit slower perhaps than a Tesla isn't something that would concern me. I'm, I don't do that many really long trips. So that isn't going to be something I'm going to have to be doing on a regular basis. Even if it was, I actually think it's quite nice to stop and chill out, um, have a look on your phone, read a book and relax. So that total drive was 26.1 miles, 44 minutes of driving with an average speed of 37 miles per hour. It was a mixed drive of 30 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour cross country, and then um, some dual carriageway at 70, 75 miles an hour. And uh, I did put my foot down a couple of times. So I drove it normally with the air conditioning on. Temperature when we left was around 8 to 10 degrees and then 13 on the way back. And it gave uh, an average of 34.8 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So on that prediction, that would come out as a range, total range of something like 220 miles if you were driving like that. Obviously, you wouldn't actually go 220 miles because you're going to have to stop at some point. But that's roughly speaking on that particular journey what that came out as. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope this has been a useful video. And uh, if you can please subscribe, like, share, click the notification icon, do all of those kinds of things. That'll be really helpful. And uh, I'll be back with a new video very soon. Thank you for watching. So you can see from this graph that the speed of charge increased when we reached about 37% and then started to decline as it increased up to 70 and then 80%. Here we can see that the total charge time was 45 minutes with a total kilowatt hours delivered 54.93 giving an average during the entire charge of 73.24. This is pretty much what the Polestar website says is to be expected on a 150 kilowatt charger taking about 40 minutes to go from 20 to 80 percent we started at 12 so that took a little bit longer to charge there's some incorrect information on the internet and you can see on this particular page that um, the information given assumes that the charge will happen at 150 kilowatts during the entire charging cycle which simply isn't going to be what you'll achieve on any electric car um, and specifically not on the Polestar 2.